Summary of the Women, a Novel, by Kristen Hanna. Chapter 1. The McGrath Estate, with its walled and gated sanctuary, hosted a lavish celebration that marked a pivotal moment for the family. The Tudor-style mansion, aglow with jewel-like mullioned windows, nestled amidst meticulously landscaped grounds, stood as a symbol of privilege and seclusion. The twilight evening set the stage for Finley's departure to Vietnam, an event laden with opulence, societal expectations, and familial tensions. Amidst the grandeur, Frances Grace McGrath, or Frankie, embodied the expected image of a well-bred young lady. The twenty-year-old navigated the soiree with poise, concealing any untoward emotions beneath a serene facade. The lessons instilled in her at home, church, and St. Bernadette's Academy for Girls had cultivated a rigid sense of propriety. The tumultuous events engulfing the country remained distant and incomprehensible to Frankie, cocooned within the confines of the McGrath estate. The carefully orchestrated scene unfolded with black-clad servers weaving through the well-dressed crowd, bearing silver trays laden with champagne. A jazz trio contributed a soft melody, casting a subtle ambience over the gathering. Frankie, sipping an ice-cold Coca-Cola, wove through the guests, engaging in small talk while concealing her underlying worry. The lush surroundings, adorned with palm fronds and illuminated by floating candles and golden lanterns, provided an idyllic backdrop to the carefully curated event. The arrival of Finley, Frankie's older brother, disrupted the composed atmosphere. The siblings, once inseparable during carefree California summers, now faced divergent paths. Finley, accompanied by his friend Rye Walsh, appeared disheveled and exuberant, late to his own celebration. The discordant noise of car horns and Finley's loud entrance rattled the tranquility carefully cultivated by the McGrath family. Dressed impeccably in a black sheath, their mother, Bette McGrath, approached the group with regal grace. Her pearls, a subtle reminder of her prestigious lineage, hinted at the family's social standing. The father, in his custom-made black suit, addressed the crowd with a cigarette in hand and a Manhattan in the other. His booming voice conveyed a mix of charisma and authority as he recounted Finley's mischievous past, drawing laughter from the assembled guests. A toast to Finley marked a significant turning point in the evening. The announcement that he would no longer be bailed out of the Coronado police station for reckless escapades elicited more laughter. The family's military history, displayed on one wall of the father's office, became a focal point of the narrative. The legacy of service, sacrifice, and success was meticulously framed in photographs and war medals. The story delved into the intricacies of the family's history, emphasizing the patriarch's rise through hard work and marriage into wealth. The absence of photographs of the father in military uniform hinted at a source of shame, which he privately lamented. The family's post-war success in real estate development further solidified their standing in Coronado. The narrative unfolded with a sense of inevitability as Finley's departure to Vietnam loomed. The dichotomy between the siblings, once united in carefree pursuits, now underscored the stark realities of adulthood and war. The celebratory atmosphere, characterized by champagne toasts and music, masked the undercurrent of fear and uncertainty. In a poignant moment, Finley reassured Frankie while acknowledging his own trepidations about going to war. The familial bonds, once a source of strength, now faced the formidable challenge of separation and potential loss. The narrative skillfully captured the complexity of emotions, highlighting the impact of historical events on individual lives. The interaction between Frankie and Rye Wallace H. in her father's office added a layer of complexity to the story. Rye's observation about the absence of women on the family's hero's wall challenged conventional gender roles. This revelation sparked introspection in Frankie, prompting her to question the limited expectations imposed on her as a woman in the 1960s. As the night unfolded, Frankie found herself grappling with Rye's words, women can be heroes. This revelation, a seismic shift in her worldview, questioned the societal norms dictating acceptable roles for women. The narrative subtly explored the constraints imposed on Frankie, from her Catholic high school's emphasis on domestic skills to her mother's expectations of early marriage. In a moment of introspection, Frankie pondered how to open up her world when no invitation had been issued. The societal expectations of becoming a nurse until marriage, reinforced by her mother's advice, 
clashed with the emerging realization that women could aspire to more than traditional roles. The narrative hinted at the societal changes of the 1960s, introducing the notion of expanding horizons for women beyond the confines of expected roles. The evening concluded with the guests making polite exits, leaving Frankie contemplating rise words and the uncharted territory ahead. The story painted a nuanced picture of family dynamics, societal expectations, and the transformative impact of historical events on individual perspectives. The intricacies of identity, gender roles, and the looming specter of war were skillfully woven into the narrative, leaving readers with a poignant reflection on the complexities of life in 1960s America. Chapter 2 Frankie's life unfolds in a delicate dance between her letters with Finley and the realities of her nursing career during the Vietnam War. The narrative presents a nuanced exploration of duty, compassion, and societal expectations against the backdrop of a turbulent era. The letters exchanged between Frankie and Finley serve as a poignant connection between siblings separated by the vastness of the war. Finley's humorous accounts of life aboard the ship, postcard pictures of exotic landscapes, and tales of rooftop bars in Saigon create a vivid tapestry that contrasts with Frankie's more grounded existence. Her commitment to her studies, resulting in an early graduation with honors, underscores a drive for personal achievement. However, Frankie's aspirations collide with the limitations imposed upon her in the hospital. The night charge nurse's reluctance to entrust Frankie with more complex clinical tasks becomes a source of frustration. The encounter with the wounded soldier in room 107 becomes a turning point. As the soldier shares the emotional toll of war and contemplates suicide, Frankie finds herself confronted with the harsh realities beyond the hospital corridors. The soldier's plea for companionship during the night resonates deeply with Frankie, planting the seed of a transformative idea. The notion of joining the military, breaking free from societal expectations, and contributing directly to the war effort becomes a revolutionary ambition. The narrative carefully navigates Frankie's internal conflict as she envisions a path outside the conventional roles prescribed for women of her time. The subsequent attempts at joining the Navy and Air Force, thwarted by regulations requiring stateside experience, become a test of Frankie's resilience. Undeterred, she persists until she finds a welcoming response at the Army recruiting station. The decision to join the Army Nurse Corps as Second Lieutenant Frances McGrath symbolizes her triumph over societal norms and her commitment to contributing meaningfully to the war. The narrative, in its exploration of Frankie's journey, delves into the complexities of identity, societal expectations, and the impact of war on individuals. Frankie's evolving character reflects a departure from the traditional gender roles prevalent in the 1960s. Her decision to serve in the military challenges preconceived notions, highlighting the transformative power of personal encounters and the profound effect they can have on shaping one's purpose. The backdrop of the Vietnam War adds another layer of significance to Frankie's story. The contrast between Finley's light-hearted letters and the soldier's harrowing experience in Room 107 underscores the harsh reality of the war. The narrative provides a glimpse into the unspoken struggles faced by those directly affected by the conflict, emphasizing the toll on both physical and mental well-being. In conclusion, Frankie's journey unfolds as a powerful exploration of personal growth, societal expectations, and the impact of war on individual lives. The narrative skillfully weaves together the threads of familial connection, professional aspirations, and the harsh realities of conflict. Frankie's decision to join the Army Nurse Corps becomes a symbolic act of defiance against societal norms, encapsulating a broader narrative of resilience and determination in the face of adversity. Chapter 3 Against the backdrop of festive decorations in downtown Coronado, Frankie's return home unveils a series of emotional revelations and upheavals within her family. The scene is set with street lamps casting a warm glow on the holiday-adorned streets, while Santas, streamers, and illuminated snowflakes evoke a sense of seasonal cheer. Upon entering her family home, Frankie is met with a cozy holiday scene, her parents dressed for dinner, the living room decked out with lights, and a towering Christmas tree. Yet, the joyous atmosphere is quickly overshadowed by Frankie's fervent desire to share a life-altering decision. Brimming with excitement, she discloses her choice to join the Army Nurse Corps and serve in Vietnam. The news is met with a mix of surprise and skepticism from her parents. 
A suggestion from her mother about meeting a boy is playfully dismissed, leading to a revelation that takes her parents aback, Frankie's decision to enlist. The revelation is met with raised eyebrows, and her mother, attempting to inject humor, assumes Frankie has met a boy. When Frankie corrects her, the atmosphere becomes charged with uncertainty. Frankie's attempt to share her momentous news is met with a lack of enthusiasm from her parents. They express disappointment and question her decision to deviate from the family's traditional naval service. Her father, flipping through a newspaper at the bar, emphasizes the family's long-standing commitment to the Navy, an integral part of their identity on the Navy-centric Coronado Island. Amidst the growing tension, the doorbell rings, signaling an unexpected twist. Two naval officers, impeccably dressed, stand at attention, signaling the gravity of their visit. The festive atmosphere takes an abrupt turn, and the officers deliver the heartbreaking news of Finley's death in action. The room is enveloped in a heavy silence, punctuated only by the officer's solemn words. The devastating news transforms the room from a holiday haven into a space of mourning. The warmth of the season is replaced by a cold reality that pierces through the family's disagreements. Frankie's aspirations to serve in Vietnam, which had seemed significant moments earlier, are now overshadowed by the profound loss of her brother. The shock of Finley's death unearths raw emotions, and the family is thrust into a new reality. Frankie, once eager to join the Army Nurse Corps, is now confronted with the harsh consequences of war. Her parents, initially disapproving of her decision, are now grappling with the unbearable grief of losing a son. The passage skillfully explores the complexity of familial expectations, the clash of traditions, and the unforeseen twists of fate. It weaves together the joy of the holiday season, the tension surrounding Frankie's decision, and the heart-wrenching blow of Finley's death. As the family navigates the aftermath of loss, the once clear path of Frankie's decision becomes fraught with the weight of sacrifice and the unpredictable nature of life during wartime. In the midst of the emotional turbulence, the narrative captures the essence of familial bonds, the fragility of life, and the unforeseen consequences of choices made. The juxtaposition of holiday celebrations and tragic news creates a poignant narrative that delves into the complexities of human experience.